I think changing track, uh, Tom, the one the one piece that really blew my mind was uh, the way you described the term baby steps. Right? Uh, in my mind, I'd understood it to be taking small steps. But you go on to say it's not just that; it's babies are a lot wiser than that. They 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 do they do this with a with a lot of uh, you know thoughtfulness. Uh, and you talk about the the notion of variable practice and the way they mix it up. Could you talk a little bit about this? nuance behind the term baby steps and how we can apply some of those principles as we learn something new? Sure. Yeah. I, I thought it would be interesting because I was writing about beginners to think about infants because we're, you know, as we all once were, infants are beginners in life. So, you know, how, how does it look to be a, a being that has to, you know, sort of be a novice at, at everything? except maybe, you know, sort of breathing. Um, and, and one of, so I, I went to New York University, they have something called the Infant Action Lab. And one of the things they, they study quite a bit is how babies learn to move. And there's sort of a process they go through where they will first just try to sit up a little bit, then they might start crawling, doing these various half, you know, crawling. Then they'll try to make this move toward walking. And, you know, it's, it's very interesting in terms of a learning process because they, you sort of violate a lot of the things you, you hear about, you know, they don't, they don't really have a specific timetable in mind or, or a goal. Uh, when, when researchers have tried to figure out where babies are even walking to, they really can't identify. They seem to be just be walking for the sheer pleasure of walking and, and to sort of practice it in a sense, because, and, and there's even some question as, as why babies learn to walk when they can really often get around pretty well by crawling and, in, in a sense, learning to walk it provides that much more learning opportunity uh, because you can see more of the world. You can you can reach other destinations. Uh, you can interact more directly with a caregiver. So I, I, I almost think there's sort of a, hung, a larger hunger for learning there going on. And, and importantly, you know that we don't give babies drills in in how to walk or, or exercises. We just sort of leave them in a room and in the house, and they try it on their own. And, you know, through this, this process of just simply trying, and there are a lot of, speaking of 10,000 hours, I mean, it takes, you know, five years or so to become a proficient walker. So there's clearly a lot of work that goes on, even though we've sort of forgotten about that. But as part of that, there's an immense failure rate. Uh, you know, the, the researchers I, I spoke to had filmed babies, you know, falling 30 or 40 or even up to 70 times in an hour while trying to walk. And then they would simply shrug it off and get up and start walking again. And uh, so there, there's something about, you know, and, and their, 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 their whole practice of learning is very sort of seems very random and, and playful and experimental. And, and they're not, they're never really trying the same thing twice because that wouldn't be a good way to learn for them because, because walking is often not the same thing moving around. And there's a famous, uh, Russian movement scientist named Nikolai Bernstein who, who called it what, repetition without repetition. And this means when, when you're trying to solve something like walking or, or how to juggle, you, you don't simply want to do the same thing all the time because that is a very brittle practice. You, you might find out the way to juggle three balls perfectly if they always land perfectly in your hands but the minute there's a little bit of variation, as, as there usually is, if you've stuck too closely to one drill, you know, you won't have the flexibility to try to solve that problem in a new way. So that, that, that's just, you know, I think babies just have this and, and children in general, just there's a lot we can sort of take on about their learning process that that would, would bring us uh benefits. Uh, obviously we know how to walk, but there's many other, many other things that we can, you know, sort of take that spirit. Uh, and, you know, another, another element there would be just a, a lack of pressure. Certainly parents are often eager for their children to start walking as soon as possible, but, you know, babies aren't really aware of that. They're not aware of, I, mu I must learn this thing or, oh, I'm falling so much. I, I'm, a, I'm terrible. I'm embarrassed. They, they have none of that. They're, they simply have the freedom to learn in, in a very sort of fun, low pressure uh, environment, which adults often do not have. 